Hungry for European football, smarter than Frank Lampard, and as small as Tony Kroos, another midfield creator, our guest today, Kenny Hot. Hey, I'm happy to be here. Uh, seen a few episodes, uh, looks fun and ready to go. I'm Kenny. I'm from uh, Middletown, New Jersey. I played for PDA growing up and then uh, for the Red Bulls and currently not on uh, a team, but looking to change that soon. How do you describe yourself as a player on the pitch? Creative. Um, I like to go forward. Uh, I like to have fun. A lot of a lot of skill moves here and there, but for the most part, I keep it simple. Uh, I like to defend. I don't love to run. I will run if I have to. I don't think any player loves to run, but you know, I'll run, I'll tackle, and I think a two-way player. Are there any players in particular that you may base your game off of? Well, like you said, uh, some people have said Kenny Cruz. Uh, yeah. I've never... I never really thought about Tony Cruz, but I guess that comparison kind of makes makes sense uh, when you look at it. So, I would, yeah, I would probably say Tony Cruz. I saw you repost the other day a training session where you were working on, it was a Tony Cruz style reverse touch. So is this 1v1, like sort of private training, your, your go-to right now? That's your structure? I mean, yeah. So I've been uh, training with, um, training and playing some games with FC Motown, which is oh, a, yeah. a men's team, which is they're competing in the USL 2 and the NPSL. So I've been training and playing with them, high level men's league. Um, also some local teams, uh, in addition to, uh, 1v1 stuff at a, down at AP2T. Um, they, they're on a great program over there. So I've, that's kind of my training structure. And I've been going like, like two sessions a day now. So staying fit, getting ready for the season opener on Saturday. So yeah, you are now with the club right now. You left Red Bulls, uh, a few months ago and, um, you went on trial this past March. You travel teams like Borussia Mönchengladbach and other teams even. Tell us about Europe. How was that? It was great. I mean, it was something that I've never... I mean, actually, that's not true. I have done before with when I was with PDA, me and... Uh, I'm not sure if you know Dentu Matore. Like some people call yeah, me. Yeah, I, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm, uh, mm-hmm. Me and him went on trial with Roma. I was a younger okay. age. I think I was in like eighth grade. And this was a more official kind of trial. Just like a one guy go and see how you do. It was great. I mean, one thing I'll say is it's very... The training is different, I think. Uh, Mm. It's more structured. Whereas here in America, at least where I've, in my experience, it's been possession, a lot of possession playing, like every day is kind of something different. But in Germany down there, it's like today is finishing, today is defensive structure, today is, and then so the players there are very well-rounded. They're all working on the same things. Uh, And while they do do positional work, they do also do similar drills. So even defenders will be in the finishing and, and what you get then is what you get a lot of players who you get a right back who can also play the eight or the six. You get uh, an eight who can play a winger. You get a lot of guys who can are versatile. Uh, another thing I saw is that, you know, I don't think when you look at it, you know, you hear, you'll probably hear a lot of like, yeah, Germany's so far ahead of America. And I don't know. I mean, seeing it mm-hmm. firsthand, I think I, I know a lot of players uh, in America that I've played with that could go over there and, and do pretty well. So I think. You know, for anyone, any young American players watching this, I think it should be motivating to hear that. Like, you can make it you know, over there. It's not much different. So, Munchen Gladbach, that that trial was uh, the most sort of reported one. You also may have trialed other uh, other teams. Is that true? Uh, no, not yet. So, Munchen Gladbach was the only one we did, but we, one, okay. we've kind of put some out there because of with COVID, the trial was very kind of awkward in a way. Like. You go, you got to quarantine for about a week. And then, yeah. and so you kind of lose fitness, you lose. So I think what we decided to do was let's push them to the summer. Um, hopefully the quarantines will be kind of done and uh, we can have more fluid ones. So I've got like five or six lined up and uh, we'll see what happens from there. At that trial at Gladbach, can you tell us about your, your day-to-day process and instant quirks? It was, I mean, it was great. It was so professional. Uh, they run such a great program over there between four or five coaches for each age group. It's crazy professional. I mean, you got a training and then you go to the weight room and everyone's got their own specific, you know, uh, everyone's got their own specific, what they need to work on. Um, and it's, it's great. I mean, after every training, there's always extra work that they're doing with players and it's great. I mean, it was, it was really cool to see the facilities were top class. I mean, everything was great. I got nothing, nothing but good things to say about it. Were the things you noticed that were different and like straight up just a whole different experience in Germany that you hadn't previous experience at training with MLS or other teams? I would say nothing really too different. Um, other than obviously I said the structure of the trainings, uh, being more like scheduled, uh, not scheduled. I don't really know how to put it. I guess structured is the word. 
um, because they have specific days to work on specific things. And like I said, players end up being more well-rounded. Um, but that's just something that I noticed, like a small thing. But other than that, I think it was it was ultimately pretty similar. You are planning to do a couple of trials in the summer. Is that sort of part of your plan is going to the trials this summer and then hopefully signing in the next year or two going to Europe? Well, I mean, look, my number one focus right now is obviously getting my name out there in Europe, but my number one focus is college. Uh, as you know, I'm committed to Duke. Mm. And that's, where okay, I plan yeah. on, that's where I plan on going. And you say mm. that if there is a, you know, I'm getting my name out there in Europe. And if there happens to be a crazy offer that you can't pass up, then I'll take it. But right now, my number one focus is, uh, is going to Duke and doing a couple of years there. Back into the U.S., back into 2020 where you appeared eight times for Red Bulls 2, had four starts and an assist even in the USL Championship. We'll get to that assist. How was your first ever professional season? It was, uh, it was great. You know, I, the, guys, the guys there made it, you know, made it pretty easy for me. and Not easy, but made it more welcoming. Like they were always, uh, always helping me out, giving me tips. I know uh, Derry Korf, Preston Kilwine, you know, guys like this, are, they were really helping me out and kind of giving me tips every training on, you know, do this, do that, like, because those guys have played at the highest level, college and the USL, and they know, they know things that they've picked up. And it was great just learning from them. We had Daniel Edelman on the show. He said he wasn't officially signed to Red Bulls 2. He sort of was just put from the academies at the similar situation you were in. Yeah, so me, Edelman, uh, Bo Cummins, all those guys kind of were on the same, uh, I don't want to say contract, but agreement, I guess, where it's called an amateur. I think it's called an amateur deal where you can play but you don't give up your college eligibility. You don't get paid. It's just, you can, you can play. And that's what we were all on. So I think that, I think that's a great thing, honestly, because Mm. it allows young players to, they don't have to decide their future at, I was 16 when I played, like I didn't have to decide, all right, we don't want to do college. I want to do this. Like I could just play and test out like the pro life. Yeah. So even though the USL championship is the unofficial second tier of American soccer, still a professional league. And with that comes a much more intense environment. Is that something that you feel maybe not even in the games or in the games also, but training the whole scenario? Definitely uh, to start in trainings. Uh, it gets very heated sometimes. You know, people say things and you learn to kind of deal with that. I think one of the biggest things for me was for my first training ever, I gave, you know, I gave a ball away. I gave a second ball away and everyone was in my ear. I was like, I was like this is different because Academy, it's like, oh, you're good. Like, you know, like just pick your head up and go. These guys are like, hey, wake up, like get into the session. But I think that's that's awesome because when I went back to the academy after that, I think, you know, me and the guys from the USL, you know, guys like Joey Zielinski, Daniel Edelman, Bo Cummins, we were all, we were just raising that level. We were holding everyone accountable. I think that's one of the, the greatest things that you can learn playing at that level. And what's the overall sense of that, not only locker room, but the organization itself when you walk into the facilities, how you're treated as a player? From very young age, I went, I went when I was, uh, I want to say 14 or 15. I think 14 or 15, I went around that age, but even from that young of an age, they hold you very accountable. Like mm-hmm. they had this app, I forget what it was called. I think it was called Fit for 90, uh, mm-hmm. where you, you fit, if you finish your session and you got to record how you feel, how the session was, and they hold you to a higher standard than other clubs. And I think that's how, you know, you see guys come out of the academy like Tyler Adams. They're so professional yeah. and they carry themselves like that. I think Red Bulls are a really, really good job of, you know, teaching you how to be a pro from a young age. And that's something that I can say they, they do very well. We got to talk about uh, that one assist, of course. New York Rebels, two se- assist of the season. Walk us through that play. Nah, so, um, you know, I got to know Caden and uh, Chris Lemma. Those are the two midfielders I was playing with. I got to know them very well. I uh, became very good friends with them. And we kind of had a really good chemistry. Uh, mm-hmm. I think if you watch that whole play, it was uh, it was like we created a little triangle and we played like a little one-two. And it was beautiful. That, that soccer was beautiful. I got the ball. I looked up. I saw Omar So making that run toward the near post and the defender was kind of running with him. And I saw Yaya or Dentuma, you might know him as, making mm-hmm. that back post run. And I know he's he's one of the fastest players we ever played with. I was like, if I can chip this over my friend Efrain Morales, uh, he was playing center back that game. Uh, I said, if I can get this over him, Yaya is going to burn him. And he had a great finish. I think a lot of us would struggle to, you know, volley that to the back of the net like he did. But a lot of credit to him because a lot of players would have missed that. So the other week, yeah, I, I did, of course, have Edelman on, and we talked about the origins of Caden Clark. Do you ever get to know Caden Clark? Yeah, me and Caden, uh, we became very good friends. I think uh, 
he probably remembers like me just beating up on him in FIFA the most. Uh, <laughs> but we uh, we play FIFA. I think like every during the season we'd play every night and I'd play FIFA and you know team buses. We'd always sit together. Kaden's a really cool kid. I think a lot of people think of him as like this like superstar next, which he is obviously. But I kind of think of him as like I remember that kid, like, the FIFA, the one who played FIFA with me and everything. So Kaden's a great kid once you get to know him. And yeah, I, I'm obviously I'm better than him at FIFA, but. That's just the way it is, and he, he'll tell you that. What do you think that makes uh, might makes it Caden so special of a player? Uh, his work rate. I mean, the kid. You know, he was out there. Uh, you know, before before trainings, the coach would have to tell him like Caden, like we we had a lift before training, and he would be out there just had like ten balls with him, just rolling them out, getting shots in, and that's something that you can't teach that. So I think uh, I think Caden's. His mindset, he has the, even though he was only 17, I think he is still is 17. He's so young. He has that mindset of like, I want to be the best. I want to, you know, work the hardest. And that pushed me as well. Once I saw that, I was like, you know, I started going out with him, you know, doing finishing after training, uh, mm. just kind of working hard. And I think that culture uh, is what made us all better. And I think uh, I really respect him for that. It's that Ronaldo mindset. Yeah, that's. It's like, yeah, you go, you're there before everyone else and you leave after. I think that that definitely goes a long way, right? For that, that work, I think, to kick in and eventually he's making his impact right now. He's been featured a lot recently on a page that you may have heard of, USMT only. Yeah. So in, uh, you were featured in October and then I think again in March, both on the, the Twitter, Instagram, all their pages. What's it like to be like your name, your face, your tag on one of those big posts like that? That's crazy. I mean, you know, I've, Talk to the guy at USMNT only, and he's just a great guy. Uh, yeah, he runs a big account, but he's just a great guy and always asking me how I'm doing. And it's special to see someone that, you know, cares about how you're doing, doesn't only care about you for your soccer. He's like, how you feeling? How you doing? He's a great guy. And it's obviously, you know, great, crazy to see. I think when they posted it, I was like, I go to check the post and in like three minutes, it had a couple hundred likes. I was like, no, oh, this is pretty like, you know. Pretty cool feeling. You have worn the the stars and the stripes a few times, appearing most like most recently, rather with the under fifteens. Is that the last time? If I'm not wrong. Yes. Yeah, so under fifteens, Concacaf. I went to that. Um, I was captain for one game. There was another camp. I think it was in England or Spain. I don't remember. It was a January camp, I believe. Uh, I missed that camp. I didn't get called for that one. And then a bunch of us got called back for the March camp, uh, and that one got canceled because of COVID. So I, that was going to be my first. Uh, under 17 uh, okay. camp, okay. you can call it, but it did get canceled. So kind of just waiting now to see what happens with that. What emotions go through your body when you do get that call up that you're going to play for the team? Well, I know a lot of people think of those guys as like, you know, these big, like I said about Caden, they think of them as these big up and coming stars, which they are obviously. All great players getting their MLS debuts and it's great to see, but I think of them as, because I've known these guys since Mm -hmm. our first camp we were in eighth grade it was you know we were so young nobody was thinking about pro and it was really cool so just kind of grow up with them because you kind of see them every two or three months you kind of grow up with them see everyone develop and i'm trying to name everyone ozzy cisneros gabriel slonina christian torres brandon craig tony leone chris brady alan rodriguez i can name all of them i'm really good friends with all of them and i I miss them because i haven't seen them in a while but Every national team game you play in is just so much fun because you got guys around you that they just want to play the game the right way. In this in this little bit, I'm going to name a player and then you're going to say what immediately comes to mind for them. All right, first player, Brendan Craig. Uh, competitor, definitely competitor. He's always wants to win. I mean, we all do, but Brandon's definitely the kind of guy who doesn't like to lose anything. He's got to win. Now, Kidding Clark. Competitor. <laughs> He's the same <laughs> way. He's, we used to get into heated FIFA games and... But that's, it's the fun of it. So Fede Oliva. Fede is, he's a quiet, he's a quiet kid. But when he, when he talks, he's funny. When he speaks, like he always, whenever he says something to say, it's very funny. But I think he's, he's a little shy at first, but when you get to know him, he's a really funny kid. All right, let's go. Tony Leon. You know, you love having Tony on your team. He just, cause on the field, he'll scream at you, but off <laughs> the field, on the bench, he'll, he'll just joke with a joke about everything. So it's, you know, you got to have guys like that that are all about their business. And then off the field, they're fun to be around. All right, let's go for Devin Tanton. I say Devin's focused. He's always uh, about his business. Like, you know, even at team meals, he's always making sure he's, you know, focused on the next training. And sometimes mm-hmm. he'll be like, Dev, like lighten up. And, it, you know, he's a funny kid, but I think he's uh, he's very focused on his goals. How about Rokas Pukstas? 
Rocky says a lot of things. He's he's funny. He's competitive. He's uh, I'd say competitive for him too. You know, we play soccer and tennis. He he doesn't want to lose. <laughs> Next player, Daniel Edelman. I'd say focused for Edelman. Uh, he's just always super locked into whatever he's doing. He never wants to lose. And he's a guy that, you know, I really have benefited from playing with. We'll be in a game where it's kind of a, a kind of a dead game and I'll see him make a I'll see him make a crazy slide tackle and I'm like, all right, now I want to make one. And he said that to me, like same thing. And I think we have that kind of chemistry we build off each other and just seeing him always so focused and locked into whatever he's doing, it, it definitely uh definitely a good thing to be around. That's the person you want to have on your team. Let's go for uh, Yaya Toure, the, the Red Bull one. Yaya's a, he's a clown, definitely a clown. He's one of the funniest kids I've ever met. <laughs> All right, last player, Evan Rotundo. Ev is uh, he's a competitor, doesn't want to lose in anything. Definitely a competitor for Ev. Any, uh, any stories that, that now come to mind? Any, uh, any re- revitalizations? Just thinking of one, uh, we, when, I, when I said raucous, uh, when I brought up rock, like when we play soccer tennis, we had these super heated like, tournaments. It would be like after, so basically the way the national team camps would work is the last day uh, was a game and then you'd leave the next day. So after that game, it was, you know, FIFA tournaments or it was because the soccer was done, the soccer part of it was done. So it was kind of, that was time to, you know, have fun. And we would have these, uh, these soccer tennis tournaments and it, it got so competitive. And I remember the team was uh, me, Austin Brummett and uh, Gabriel Slonina. And we won the soccer, the soccer tennis tournament, and it was just silent after that. <laughs> the dinner, it was silent. There was a lot of, uh, definitely a lot of things said, and but it was all fun. So that was one of the more fun times I've had at the, one of these camps. If you were to look at back at this podcast, talk to yourself from a year from now, if you're looking back in May 2022, what's the goal that you want to set for for that year, and maybe even for the coming in the future? Definitely just. Uh, Make sure you prove yourself at the trials. Don't let, don't let any trial, um, don't let any trial go by without giving it a hundred percent. Cause you never know where you're going to end up. Never know what's going to happen. And, uh, I think that's my main focus right now is just preparing for those. And, uh, obviously get, you know, my grades have to be great to get into Duke. So telling myself to keep my grades up, uh, get the SAT score up and all that kind of stuff. So I think those are the main things I would tell myself. Well, Kenny. Uh, whether you're going to be at the 2026 World Cup final, either you're starting or maybe you'll even manage it. Let's uh, door just like run the whole the whole business. Super excited for that day. Let's make that happen. It's been a pleasure. Yep. Thank you. Thank you for coming on. Yep. Thank you for having me. It's been fun. Thank you. And um, have a good one.